welcome back. As we focus on the underlying theme of education, we welcome Brighton Codd from BK Sports Group on the show as we explore the implications of Belizean athletes studying abroad. BK Sports Group, founded in 2018 by brothers Brighton and Beresford Codd, emerged from the brothers' personal experience with a scholarship from Breerkirk College in Canada. Motivated by their own journey, they established the organization to aid other talented Belizean student athletes in transition to colleges in the United States and Canada. The organization's core philosophy, Nurturing the Roots, reflects its commitment to supporting promising athletes in pursuing international competitiveness. Since its inception, BK Sports has facilitated the transition of over 15 Belizean athletes to colleges in the US and Canada securing scholarships exceeding two million Belize dollars. Notably, their efforts have been voluntary, driven by the belief that their organization contributes to a cultural shift for present and future generations of athletes. Welcome, Brighton. Thank you for having me here, Afia. Okay. It's good to be in studio with you. Absolutely. So, Mr. Brighton, Cod, we understand that the Ministry of Education has been committed to financially supporting Belizean athletes who are transitioning into tertiary level education. And of course, that's in collaboration with BK Sports. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Um, so we've had ad hoc conversations with the Minister of Education. In fact, even before this current administration, we've had those conversations with the previous administration because we see the importance of sports development and what it does for our uh, young athletes coming up and how it makes them better rounded citizens. Um, and so we've had ad hoc conversations, but we've sort of formalized the engagement that we have now with the ministry and the minister uh, by signing a memorandum of understanding that solidifies uh, financial support for athletes who are transitioning from Belize to the US and Canada to ensure that it's a more smooth process um, because it's a cost. And so to be able to meet those costs, we need to have financing, uh, you know, we have to have financing in our coffers to be able to support that transition for athletes. Um, considering again that it is an expense, you're going to a country where it's uh, one US dollar, two billion dollar, and so there's a conversion rate as well. So we have to be able to ensure that there's a more smoother transition for athletes going abroad. Okay, good. So, well, as for the athletes, we've heard names such as Francis Hawes, Kaylin Ingram, and that's only to name a few. When the athletes do get these scholarships, what, what does it include for them? It all depends on what happens in negotiations with the coaches from the school and the, the budget that the school has. We try to ensure that we get the best scholarship through our negotiation process uh, with these coaches. Um, sometimes it takes months of negotiations prior to them getting a deal solidified because we try to ensure that we get as much covered for the guys so it would cover uh, their tuition, uh, housing, as well as their meals. Uh, some schools, division ones in particular because they have bigger budgets, could cover everything for some athletes. Um, and so we try to ensure that when we are negotiating, we are getting as much as we possibly can from those coaches to ensure that we close a good deal for these students. Because it is a financial burden if you have to go and draw a loan to, to send your child to school. And so to prevent that from happening, we try to ensure that we, we negotiate to be able to secure those funds before we go to that step of actually seeking financing otherwise. So, so how, how do the negotiations they take place? Um, it's a series of Zoom calls that happens, um, certainly established through networks that I've created um, while I was volunteering in the US with volleyball uh, coaches, as well as my time in Canada creating, um, I guess, that existing presence through actually playing at a school and dominating in, in the ACAC. Um, it was easier to create those networks, and we have solidified that through BK Sports now formally, um, by reaching out to the coaches and negotiating with them throughout the year. Uh, even when there is not the period of actually engagement, we engage with the coaches okay. um, to ensure that we build that rapport. So wonderful contribution on your end, personally. So the Alberta Colleges Athletic Conference, um, it has just named Mr. Cameron Coleman as 2023's Athlete of the Year, I understand, yes. and, and for the all-time kills. Yes, that's, so. that's actually exciting news. I'm not surprised at all because from the first year that Karim went to Barakers College in Canada, um, he was dominating as well. 
we were all we were known as the the Bash Brothers in Canada Thank actually. You. Um, and Karim played the right side and I played the left side and so it was always tit for tat. But Karim definitely had that trajectory of setting this all-time uh, record for kills because he was scoring about six points every set. Um, that's, if you play volleyball and you know volleyball, that's a lot of points uh, okay. in, a, in a set. So with that type of trajectory in terms of kills, he was bound to, to set this record. Okay. So there are a lot of buzz around, around Mr. Mr. Coleman. So what have we been doing to celebrate? That's a good that? question. I certainly think that one way that he could be celebrated more is by ensuring that he has all that he needs to ensure that he goes through his um, degree because Karim actually started with the undergrad program and he's doing a master's now. Mm -hmm. But the scholarship only covers one year of his master okay. because he only has five years eligible to play and this is his fifth year. So there is one year that he would certainly need that support to be able to complete his master's degree in Canada. Okay. So certainly if we want to celebrate him, we could do that by supporting, supporting his educational journey. Okay, yeah. So what do these at least have to do in return for their scholarship? Like what is ex what's expected of them? To be quite honest, there, there is no expectation. Um, certainly just, I, I think, leave the door open for other athletes coming behind and, and be a role model. Um, portray and display those characteristics of good leadership and ensure that we continue to bring others along. That's all we ask of these athletes. There's nothing in return, really. Um, but a lot of the guys help by giving back to community. When they come back, like, for example, Daryl Av Avila had graduated from Concordia University of Edmonton, and he came back and he started his own program in uh, Toledo. And so just giving back to community through their experiences and the knowledge that they have garnered over the years, I think is, is all that we could possibly ask from them. Okay. So we know that brain drain is a factor um, you right. know, all around, and especially the athletes, there are no exception. What do you think that we can do to, to make sure that our athletes, they go abroad and they come back home? Good question and interesting question. Um, because personally for me, um, having come back, I think if I didn't have such a drive for national development, I probably wouldn't have been here right now. Mm -hmm. um, certainly the guys will be receiving offers from international teams um, to go on pursue professional um, journeys. However, I think we need to develop our systems here at home. We need to be able to expand the sporting system and what that looks like. Mm, How we are yeah. certainly um, compensating mm -hmm. athletes for the work that they're putting in because it takes a toll on your body. Um, certainly you, oftentimes as an athlete, I have to work an eight to five job mm -hmm. and then I have to go and put in the work at the gym that's, and practice. That's quite a challenge. Right, that's and it's a challenge. So. We have to be able to develop that system that supports long-term athlete development, which is something that we don't do a lot here in Belize. Our long-term athlete development is basically non-existent. Mm -hmm. I should know what I am going to do after I come back as an athlete, or even when I retire from being an athlete, I should know that there is a step for me going forward. Maybe it's coaching, maybe it's athletic training, but there should be another step after that retirement age sets in. Okay. So Brighton, I want to focus on the dynamic bunch of four. One of them, mm -hmm. they refer to you as Big Brother. <laughs> so these gentlemen, they're making, you know, waves at Calumet um, College. There's Mr. Francis Haas, who is leading the way, Ethan Dawson, Thomas Garbutt, and Braden Richardson. What can we expect from, from, from these young athletes? I think what you can expect is, is a powerhouse of volleyball players in the upcoming years. And essentially a, a chemistry that is being built that will not be easily broken. Um, and that's important for any team sport. I wanna specifically touch on Francis because his case is, is very different to all the other guys. Um, Francis was the first person who received a scholarship to Calumet. And this is one of the things when I say we want for the guys to leave the door open for others coming behind. That's how the other guys ended up at Calumet as well. Okay. Because he basically spoke for them and ensured that, um, you know what, there's a space where you're here to just keep up your grades, keep performing well on the court, um, staying disciplined with your craft, 
and we could actually extend this opportunity to you as well. And I think that's one of the things we ask for the guys when they go abroad, um, to ensure that they open up the door of opportunity for other athletes. Mm -hmm. But Francis um, initially was supposed to go to Canada. He had received a full tuition scholarship to Canada, and he was not offered the visa to go and study in Canada after trying for maybe about four or five times. And so that's a cost one. But also, it just shows how hard it is sometimes to get our athletes and our people into the other countries. And I think this is one of the areas that we now want to look at in formalizing partnerships with uh, governments from the US and from Canada to ensure that our students could get access to these scholarships. Because it's development on both ends, it's not only for our country, but Again, their institutions in the U.S. and Canada benefits from the talent that's coming from Belize as well. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I certainly like the support system that, mm -hmm. that they all have over there. So you touched on how we can support, but has the diaspora reached out to support um, um, any other way? Certainly, but I think it could be more formally organized okay. um, to ensure that that support actually reaches the athletes quicker. Um, I think there are athletes who could get support if you're in the US, for example, that's one avenue that you could support the athletes who are there. We have athletes in South Carolina, in Florida. Um, we have athletes in Illinois, uh, in Iowa. And so there's a, a wide group of athletes um, across different states in the US that could use the support because sometimes um, you have expenses that outside of school itself that you need to take care of. And so um, certainly if they could be supported financially, that's welcomed. Um, and so we need to establish a more formal method for that to, to occur. Okay. <clears throat> so Brighton, what message would you like to, to send to volleyball fans, the players, particularly about BK Sports? I think um, BK Sports is really and truly um, it came from an idea of wanting to shift the culture of sports development in Belize. Um, as a young athlete, I spent more than 10 years before going from beginner to professional. And uh, I thought that if it wasn't for that leap of faith and getting the opportunity to go to Barracrest College, a lot of our athletes would still be in country right now simply because there was not an avenue for our athletes mm -hmm. to use their athletic abilities to expand their education. Um, and so it's essentially a group that was formulated by young people because all of the guys volunteered to ensure that we got to this step. Um, it started out really as working in communities across the country, but we quickly realized that we are going to need human resources to be able to do that and we're gonna need financing to be able to do that. However, we also saw the avenue of creating educational pipeline opportunities for um, our athletes. And now we have young men and young women from all different sports because we also have Mia Sylvester who also just recently set a record, an all-time record at her school for weight throwing. Okay. Um, so we are now looking at not just volleyball, but track and field as well, um, football, basketball, and so, we noticed that it was a blueprint that wasn't only for volleyball itself. And so we initially started as BK Volleyball, but now it's BK Sports okay. because we realized that it could certainly transcend the different sporting disciplines. And that's what we really want to, to do. We want to be a champion for sports development and the development of our young people. Okay. So for a young athlete that's dreaming of the opportunity to go away and maybe on their scholarship, tell us how that person can be the recipient of a scholarship? I think one of the first things that um, every athlete should have is a sports highlight tape. And you need to ensure that you're taking your craft seriously because coaches won't negotiate or make deals on athletes that are not taking their craft seriously. Um, a lot of times these athletes, they come from different club programs or they come from the national team program. So that's the first, uh, I guess, eligibility um, background that you need to have. You also need to ensure that you're doing good in school, um, your grades are up, because what that does is that it creates an opportunity for you to not only secure an athletic scholarship, but also an academic scholarship. Because what your athletic scholarship doesn't cover, your, athletic scholarship, your academic scholarship can cover. So um, that's important. 
And then ensure that you just reach out to our page, BK Volleyball, on Instagram or on Facebook, and we will see how we could navigate from there. Okay. Um, it's really and truly an open door policy. We don't turn anyone back. We try as, to help as much as we possibly can um, to ensure that athletes and their parents get the best out of the engagements that we, we carry out with coaches. Because at the end of the day, from my personal experience, even though I got a tuition scholarship, I still had to go and withdraw a loan. And so I know the financial burden that that has on not just myself coming back and having to work, but also on my family. And we don't want to see that going forward for other athletes. So we try our best to ensure that we engage on their behalf to settle that from the onset. Okay, <clears throat> thank you. Thank you so much, Brighton, for all the information. It was a wonderful conversation. Pleasure for having me here. Yes, yes. So we want to you know, wish you and BK Sports all the success and, of course, our athletes away at Colomet. Thank you, Rafi. Okay. When we return, Destiny talks to the innovators of the week. Thank you.